Every cup is completely different. I know. It's probably not even called cups. They probably call them glasses here. It's crazy. This is what happens when you let the cameraman get the beer. <laughs> Okay, we are at Scandia RV Park, and uh, we're headed out to dinner. Where, where are we going? Where are we going, brewery. Trish? What's that? We're going to brewery because it's Father's Day. Woo Let me give you some fa some fathers out there. Let me have a conversation with you, okay? Just 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 you and me. Everyone else, just kind of cover your ears. When it's Father's Day, you turn everything into an adjective. Me, I have some Father's Day coffee. Would you mind closing that Father's Day window? Hey, where's my Father's Day phone charger? You just put Father's Day in front of everything, okay? That's the tip, and you, you don't get any nose. Is that, is that right, Carson? Yeah, because then you feel bad. Hey, where's my Father's Day Uber? Later. My Father's Day beer? Where's my Father's Day beer? We are on our way to, what's the name of the, the shoots? It's a, supposedly a very nice craft brewery. Yes. In Bend, and it's uh, two miles, it's two miles away, okay? And, uh, and so we're gonna walk there there. We're gonna walk there now, and then we're going to, we're gonna Uber back. You know we're doing this because we don't have, like, my truck. All right, that's the plan. Let's walk. Thank you, Carson. Now Carson's giving me a little Father's Day wand. Like, Father's Day, stop doing that, Caleb. Okay, the truck mechanic place called. The truck starts absolutely no problem. Started fine today. They drove it around a whole bunch to heat it up and warm it up, and it still starts no problem. And then they looked in the code history. No issues. No issues there. No history in the codes. So I'm gonna go get it. I did get an oil change. I topped off all the fluids. I had them check everything. Everything looks great. Uh, and I'm gonna drive it as much as I possibly can this week and I'm gonna cross my fingers that it does not start here in Bend <laughs> while I've already paid the money to di diagnose the problem. So anyway, let's go ride our bike, shall we? Got possibly some good news. Ryan, who's a KYD insider, I posted the issues we were having with the truck and he posted back check the fuse to the fuel pump and he had a whole deal on the Ford forums that sometimes the fuse can get burned out and that can create some intermittent problems with starting well thank you Ryan check this out that's right there the 20 amp fuse look how burned it is so there's a chance that the fuse was not blown but it was basically not working because it was so hot which is why I didn't start at the Chinese food restaurant but started that morning when it was cold, when it was cool in Tokiti Falls. So I went into my fuse bag. I don't have a small 20 amp. So I'm gonna head over and ride my bike to Amazon now. And I'm gonna go get a 20 amp. I'm also going to get a five and a 10 and a 15 because I already have the big ones. So I need the little ones. I'll pop back over here. I'll put that fuse in. Back from AutoZone. That didn't take long. A little sweaty. Bobby Joe who's a KYD insider, happens to be staying in this very same park and she saw the post. She says, do you wanna use my truck to go over there? So nice, but it's so close on the bike. So here's what I got. I got a little kit for little ones, 10, 15, five, 20, 25. I'll use the 20 out of there. I got the big one just to make sure if this ever happens again, I've got everything I need. A little fuse taker outer. So let's go put these things in. Fuse is in, starts like a champ. Found out a uh, big help to Harold and Ryan uh, on the KYD Insider Facebook page. They're helping me through this. There's a service bulletin for Fords regarding the fuse to the fuel pump that it might be too small and there's actually a relocation kit where you can actually move it, move that fuse to a 
bigger 20 amp fuse. So I might consider doing that. I've got a whole bunch of spare fuses now, which I'm gonna put in the glove box. I at least feel a whole lot better than I did before because there's an actual known issue regarding this and that I had a burned out fuse. <sighs> anyway, I'm gonna get back to work. All right, good morning. Trish and I are headed to Zamp. We're pretty excited. We've teamed up with Zamp on the solar stuff. They have been fantastic. And they're headquartered in Bend. That is where their office is. That's where they manufacture all the product, their solar. So we're gonna do a tour, not a complete tour. There's some confidential proprietary stuff over there, <laughs> all right? But right. we're gonna record as much as, as, much as we can and uh, just go check it out because I think it's super cool. So let's see, but first we're gonna go get some breakfast for the kiddos so that when they wake up they have things, things to eat. Now I am about safety. Oh Always. Mark, they go with your shirt. Do they? I know, right? It's yeah. really fancy. Yeah. This is known actually as a module in the solar industry, not a panel. A panel is technically when you put two of them together and then you put multiple panels together, you have an array. Multiple arrays, you have a farm. These are uh, just your straight out of the box solar cells. These are, are ones that we're gonna demonstrate with how, uh, how flexible they actually are and aren't. Feels like a piece of glass paper, yeah. but not flexible, but very fragile. So the stringer doesn't actually solder the cells. This is just a full spectrum light that is so bright and so hot that the cell generates power and it has nowhere to send it, so it solders itself. based on this, uh, positive and negative on a string. So it has, it, the way it's kind of like a flat battery. But the way if you look at it, the back side's uh, positive, front side's negative. So right now I got negative, positive, negative, positive. So it works in a circuit that way. So ribbons essentially turn it into a circuit. Uh, you could think of this as if they were batteries and you series up your batteries together to increase the voltage. Uh, Trevor's essentially seriesing these together to get it to the right voltage. Other layers then stick to that glue and the back sheet is kind of like a Kevlar. So once it comes out of the lamination, you have transformed the material from soft to hard. Not gonna break real easy. one of my favorite parts, the sticker process. It means a lot. The tech shop here at Zam Solar, we hold ourselves to NASA wiring standards here. Uh, these guys you could call the short order craftsmen. DC is direct current, meaning positive and negative are only maintaining those paths. AC, they're gonna flip back and forth 60 times a second and that's alternating current. TDC? That has nothing to do with the band, because the dirty <laughs> jeans are not done dirt jeans. So. When people call in, it's like uh, it's like the car show, the radio show car talk. Yes. Like, it's doing a little this, and my, uh, my battery's like that. And we gotta try and figure out how their system's wired together. All right. Yay! We are leaving Zamp. It is one o'clock. We got here at nine. <laughs> <laughs> we got sucked into the solar force. We, as you saw, we loved it. The solar, we, as you saw the tour, everything being manufactured right there, watching yeah. people put the screws in, putting the American made sticker on. Anyhow, so now we have Tori's Dutch Bros order. <laughs> and, um, uh, but first I want to drive you around the creek here, the, 
whatever it is, mm -hmm. to shoots. Okay. It is so gorgeous. Yeah. And there's little kayaks and people floating. You should just see it because it just feels cool. Awesome. Okay, we came down here to Bend to go look at the farmer's market. Very cute farmer's market, quaint. Yes. Kind of all along one row. Yes. Yeah, lots of vegetables. What is this cute restaurant? Everything is so... Charming. Adorable. It's a crazy charming It feels charming like everything town. is in like a house or a, you know, restaurants are yeah. like shooting out into the little sidewalks down you the alley. You hear the birds chirping? There's birds chirping. There's like pavers here. There's grass. There's like people reading. In the lake, They're right, like reading on the grass. Right, the lake right there. People are getting tubes and are floating down the river. Like some people, their way of getting around town is by a paddle board. So um, what do you want to do now? I would love to just go walk like down some of the streets. You should come and see like the town. Let's go see the town. Okay, we are off to Smith Rock. Very excited about it. Big, huge, beautiful view of a big old rock named Smith. Smith Rock. Today's the big meetup. Yeah, we are meeting up with everyone in Bend. We got a little meetup. I wonder if it's too noisy. Windows up. Got to turn left here? Yes, please. We've got a meetup today with uh, all the KYD community in Bend, which I can't believe how many people red light, red light. are in Bend. Anyhow, but we love this place. So anyway, we're gonna head out. It's 1221. Trish and I have been busy this morning. We've been getting lots of stuff done, but now we're gonna head out to Smith Rock. We're not going to be there long, unfortunately, because we need to get back. Then we're going to do a brewery tour of oh, Crux. Oh, yes! That starts at 5.15. Then the meetup. Then i got to get a video out today. we got to do the video on the thingy with bopper. How long is this tour? Oof. Anyhow. we got a lot to do today. we got a lot to do. And then tomorrow, we're potentially going kayaking down the Deschutes River. I'm excited about that. Should I be fun. And time. Tori is continuing her nationwide tour of friends. Yes. And meeting up with another friend. Yes. So she's not joining us tomorrow because she's going to be hanging out with a friend named Morgan, who happens to be in Bend. Tori just happens to have friends all across Everywhere. the country. It did not take us long to find a breathtaking view. Literally, I'm looking at our car. This trail right here, which by the way, is completely accessible by wheelchair, gets you that view. So I guess there is an eagle right up in that nest with a little baby that's about one to two weeks away from taking its first flight. So it's kind of exciting. Limited time opportunity to come see that, but there's other eagles that reside here so you can do all kinds of bird watching. We are here for another installment of Mark and Tori's Tips, tips and Tricks Take Smith Rock Edition. <laughs> That's right. Okay, let's kick it off with uh, tip number one. Let's talk about logistics and how to get here. All you gotta do is put in Smith Rock and your little Google Maps, and it is so easy to get here. Just about 45 minutes north of Bend. And when you get here, parking's gonna be $5, and you don't have to stop at an ATM to get cash like we did. You have a credit card. Super simple, put it in there, throw the receipt in your dash, and you're all good to go. So that is the logistics, Tori. Tip two. Tip number two, things to bring. Oh, number yes. one. What do you got? My trusty, nifty little hydro flask. Those things are so cool. I love. Tori those. loves her hydro flask. These things are the bomb, and if you're interested in them, go ahead and click that link up there because we actually link to them. Other things to bring. 14 hours of ice. 14 hours of ice. Other things to bring. Trish said sunscreen. bring like a cliff bar, bring some sunscreen, sunscreen bring for a cliff your bar. Little 
ginger self. Yeah, that's right. Ginger needs some sunscreen. Okay, tip number three. Is that me? Yeah. What was my tip? Um, Things to do is tip go. number three. I was shocked to see that there are mountain bikers on the same trail. There's hiking, there's rock climbing, you can swim, there's fly fishing. In fact, I don't think there's a single thing I did not see someone doing here. But there's another thing to do, and that is bird watching. And that brings us to tip number four. <laughs> Bring some binoculars because yep. at this moment, mm -hmm. won't last very long, maybe two weeks, mm -hmm. but there is an eagle's nest and it's at the very top of one of those trees. And Beautiful. if you have binoculars, you might be able to see it a lot better than we did. Yeah, and we actually have some really cool binoculars too. All right, tip number five, and probably one of my favorite ones. Puppies! Puppies, there are dogs allowed on this trail. And anytime, I know there's so many people that watch that are dog lovers and travel with your dog and animals. So if, uh, there, and it is so difficult sometimes to find hikes where you can bring pets, and this is one of them. So check it, put it, put it on your list. Definitely make your way up to Oregon. I can't get over how absolutely beautiful this place is. Yeah, one Don't of your skip favorites. Oregon, I love Oregon. Yeah, Oregon's amazing. It's been it's been pretty cool. All right, let's get out of here and let's get prepared for our meetup. Ruby the Destroyer. Got her out there, friends. Hi. Oh, yeah. hi. I love you too. Oh yes, that's Benelli or Nelly. Hi Nelly. That's the mama. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah. Gosh, yeah, you said that. Yeah, she. Yes. She's a lot. She's so cute. How are you guys? Come and squeeze in here like this. Mark just told me to come and squeeze next to him. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we are. We're at Crux Fermentation Project. Fermentation. Fermentation Project. project. And yes. we are in the back getting a private tour by Drayson. They pulled back the curtains. Oh, yeah. We're yes. going to get the inside scoop here. Yes. Now, here's the deal. So, Drayson says, Hey, I normally give out samples. Let me go get some samples. What kind of beer do you like? Trish doesn't like beer, so now the challenge is on. They want to convert <laughs> Trish to a craft beer drinker. Oh my gosh, but I don't know. I, I think don't they know. can do it. I think they can do it. So, anyway, we're going to meet all sorts of cool people. We're going to show you how craft beer is made. And then after the tour, we're going to pop outside and we're going to like hang out with a whole bunch of people that watch the channel from Bend. Hey, well, how fun can is I get that? what's important here? Yeah. We're going to get some craft root beer. Okay. So, I've got a little taster flight that we're going to kind of go through all right. uh, and taste those beers, and I'm going to try and convince you <laughs> the challenge through your is on. the challenge is on That's yeah. Style Hefeweizen. It is open fermented, um, and uh, so when you taste it, definitely on the before you taste it, bring it up in your nose, smell that. Um, you should definitely get banana on the taste. You should get a little bit of clove, and you should get a little after after taste a little bit of like uh, bubble gum on it. Well, that is a lot that of expectations. Like <laughs> so let's do it. It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> but are you convinced? Are, are you convinced? convinced? You saw the facial expression. Are it you convinced? It was good. It was good. I taste banana. Did you say banana? I just said. That was, so, okay, hold on. So I taste bubble gum. Did you say bubble gum? It said, yeah. <laughs> and clove. How about cloves? Did you say cloves? In its flavor profile. So again, it's like an American <laughs> half for This is your drink, Trish. <laughs> Got to slow down. <laughs> so really, what this is is farmhouse currency. Whatever was left over, they would pay. Would pay the field workers with beer um, at the oh, end of the season. Okay. Once the you know, they take whatever ingredients were left over, they'd make beer, oh. and this is what the, the the workers would be paid with. The extra provisions. But what I have to tell you, Mark, is that you only get a sip of this one because so far this one's my favorite. Okay, well, yeah. let's see it. Don't drink it all. <laughs> okay. All right. You want to? Wait, hold on. What do you think? I like it. You're okay. only allowed to have a sip. Right, hold on. But what did you think of the reaction? What did you think of the facial expression? With Trish, she's always so nice. So she'd be like, oh, that's so good. That's so good. But you have to look for the microburst expression. Yes. Let me try. See, you're, you're slugging it down here, mister. Here, get, this is mine. That's good. It's no, getting see, fruitier. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hands off, mister. Okay, Trish is starting to hog it. This is your... A uh, chance to learn about happiness versus bitterness. Oh, wait, Did you Let's not see? waste. No, no, no. Let's not hey, waste. Let's not waste. Both <laughs> taking my beer. Little beer. Let me go but first. Really, this time. Let me go first. No, no, no. This is chemistry class. <laughs> this is this, this is, is Atea, for, for someone that science. doesn't like beer. It's getting awfully uh, clingy. I, 
<laughs> Here we go, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Oh wow, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really surprised. Master, Master Brewer. Master Brewer, that's yep. the technical term? Yep. Master Brewer? Yep. All right, awesome. Yeah, only job I've ever had in my life. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I was at 23 years in a little place called Olympia Brewing, mm -hmm. and then I moved to a hop company, then I moved to the Schutz Brewery, and then okay. I'm here. Awesome. So, awesome. All right, so what is the secret of making great craft beer that you can share? Have the, have the master brewer own the company. <laughs> <laughs> that we, is good. we will take no shortcuts. Oh, every good brewery has to have somebody watching the brewers, kind of watching their back a little. So, there he is. Lego man is my man. <laughs> That's the best way to watch. Hey, here we are, right in front of Mirror Pond, right like downtown Bend. If you're in Bend and you're like, should I stay for like three days or like five days? Make or, it ten days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's so much to do here. We're scratching the surface. So you know what? Uh, we'll be back. Yes. We'll be back. But anyway, yes. all right, let's go up the stream. Let's go okay, get this. Okay, come on. Dad here always stops every two seconds like Hey, Caleb, we're going super fast. Oh, let me just break so I can... Oh my gosh, is that a dog? We have to go backwards. Whoa. We have to go backwards right now. Caleb, come on. Come on, Caleb, come on. See what I'm dealing with? Okay, let me explain to you all the options that you have to have fun in the river in Bend. You can grab a tube and come out to this water park and float down this, this little white rapid water park and get to the end where we're sitting right here and then just walk your raft up to the top and keep going. As Trish and I have been sitting here, we've seen numerous people coming down. Some people have a regular tube that I'm sure they've rented. Some people have a duck. Some people have a swan. Some people have a starfish. Some people have a, uh, some people have a double kayak and they come down. I am now looking at a dolphin. Somebody has a dolphin. Whatever you bring, it's going to be fun and the kids are going to totally dig this. So here's what we did. We went with Ben kayaks and we got a couple double kayaks and we started down like downtown Bend. Is we actually started at the bottom and we kayaked our way up against all of the tourists. <laughs> and uh, and now we get to now we get to kayak back faster, three times as faster I would think. Oh, yeah. How's it going? A little bit tired, but good. Why are we so tired from Ben? Why did Ben <laughs> make us so tired? Ben wore us out. We did. We were here for an entire week. It was fun. It was great. All right, so here's the deal. I need a haircut. Trish got a haircut. She found an awesome place called Headlines in Bend. You yes. liked it a lot, didn't you? I liked you? it a lot. It was a cute little, yeah. it was inside of a house. Yeah. And then right next door, there's a restaurant called Spork. Mm-hmm. Really good. Was that in a house too? Kind of felt like it. All right, so um, I'm gonna get a haircut and you guys are gonna get a pedicure. Yes. And then we're gonna go stop for breakfast at 12.30. So RV park update, this was Scandia RV park in Bend. There are three RV parks in Bend. This had the most community feel to us. We looked at Crown Villa, it was a little bit expensive for us to stay an entire week. It would have been like 90 bucks a night or something like that. Yeah, because it was like base price 70 and then they wanted to charge five bucks. Or Trisha's dad stayed there 
They loved it. They loved it. It was great. I mean, pavers and grass. I mean, it really did look nice. Mm -hmm. But um, we liked Scandia. I mean, we like parks that have that community feel where people talk to each other and that kind of stuff. Okay, and if you're a donut lover, right <laughs> next yeah. door is oh, Richard's Donut. Yeah. The best donuts I've ever had. Just like that, the hair is cut. Okay, so here's the deal. Ken Dunn lives in Bend. He missed the meetup. And he's like, what? You guys are in Bend? I missed the meetup. You gotta follow us on Instagram or Facebook because we will never do a meetup without posting it on both face, Facebook and Instagram. So forever in your in your town, follow us there because that's where we're gonna know. That's where we're gonna announce it. He's gonna go to state. Trisha's gonna go to Trader Joe's, and I'm gonna go get some drone footage of Bend. So let's go.